Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So it appears that we uh, got disconnected. It appears that we got disconnected. So I just uh, want to make my audience feel uh, our topic that we were discussing uh, is on uh, overcoming church hurt. And we were just addressing this. Uh, listen, please, I'm just going to wait till my audience to build. In the event, if we get disconnected, we will reconnect. We were experiencing technical difficulties, but the topic is on church hurt. God bless you. I see you all come back in. Prophet Roger, Patricia, Skeeta, Avon, God bless you. I see you all are joining me. I pray that you all are blessed. Listen, for those of you who heard um, the segment for, for the first portion of it, please share that portion of the video. Please share the video. God bless you, Prophet Roger. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, we're talking about church hurt, overcoming church hurt. I promise you, this message is going to be a blessing. Uh, if any of you have any questions, please feel free to ask me the questions because I want to be a blessing to you tonight. We were just talking about the church is a hospital. Uh, the church is a hospital. I see you all are getting connected back on. Amen. Amen. I see you guys are reconnecting. God bless you. Thank you. We're experiencing technical difficulty. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I hope you guys are sharing this video. Amen. And also share the uh, portion one. Share portion one where we got disconnected. Amen. And so I'm going to continue. I'm not going to take any much uh, any further time. But I'm going to continue with this. Uh, so we know that the church uh, is a hospital. We talk about the church being a hospital. Uh, and, and doctors, the doctors are considered as, as leaders, right? And we should not be inflicting pain on the people. Uh, and and uh, the, pe the people who are the patients uh, shouldn't be hurting other patients when they're heal healed, right? That's one portion. Uh, the other thing that I want to say is that the church is a hospital, uh, and the hospital gives necessary prescription. Necessary prescription. What is the prescription? The prescription is the word, uh, so that our uh, a condition can improve and that we can stay healthy. Uh, uh, one of the things that I see that we do is misdiagnose. We misdiagnose. Remember I said the prescription is the word, but we are giving up prescriptions that's misdiagnosing people. Oh God, I want you to catch that right there. For those of you who may have missed that, I see all the hearts, the thumbs up. God bless you. It lets me know that you're receiving this. Uh, people are getting misdiagnosed with the wrong prescription, meaning the word of God. Uh, people are getting the wrong doctrine. People are getting word that's misdiagnosing their condition. And Amen. And so people are not being healed because you're giving the wrong prescription. You're helping them uh, with the necessary prescription for them to get better, for them to get healed, so that their wounds can be healed. What prescription are you giving the people? Amen. Have you made the church a pharmaceutical company where you're just making billions of dollars and making money, but really not helping the people? Uh, what are you doing to help the people? Amen. To get better. Amen. To, to heal the wounds that the people are dealing with. Uh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's one of the things that I want to share as well. Uh, the church. Hallelujah. As I said, it's a hospital. Nobody goes to the church with the intentions of coming out of dead. Amen. Uh, they go to the church to come out alive. People want to feel reinvigorated. They want to feel restored. They want to feel where life is coming into them, where the Holy Spirit is residing in them. They want to feel the presence of God move in them. That's what this is about. Uh, the church is a hospital. Watch this. Where there is discrimination, when you go to a hospital, they're not supposed to discriminate. There should be no discri discrimination based on your ethnicity, your gender, uh, uh, or your race, or anything of that nature, your age. Hallelujah. There should be no discrimination. But why is it that when people go to church today, that there is nothing but discrimination? There's nothing but criticism. Uh, why is it that people are being discriminated because? 
because of your skin color. Well, when you go to a church, people are being discriminated because of their age. The old folks can't agree with the young, uh, the, the new generation. Uh, uh, people are saying uh, that the, the, the new generation don't understand the old ways. The old ways can adapt to the new ways. There's nothing but discrimination. And rather than us coming together as a unified body of believer to build up the kingdom of God, to establish the kingdom of God here on earth so that we can prepare the people, as I mentioned, yet we're not seeing that nothing but discrimination oh, we're discriminating people based on their social status we're discriminating people based on their financial status uh, and all kinds of things and this is not the church that Christ has called people of God uh, beloved of Christ this is not the church that he has called uh, hallelujah and so the church amen you you, you have uh, is a place where we got to be uh, come together where there's a coming together where love where we see the love and the compassion but that's the problem we don't have compassion upon one another we can't even stand each other we don't talk to each other we don't like each other we back back we back bite one another we don't even like each other right oh uh, we, we gossip about one another we don't even say hi to each other yet we say we come to God and we're lifting up holy hands what kind of hands are you lifting up if you say you don't like each other ah uh, the Bible says you got blood on your hands you can't say that you're lifting up holy hands before God but yet hallelujah you don't love your brothers and sisters the Bible says you can't say you love God but yet hate your brothers and sisters the Bible calls you a liar that's nothing but hypocrisy where is the love where is the compassion where is when we, we, we used to we can the Bible is when you lay down your life for one another and that's what Jesus did he laid down his life for his sheep he laid down his life where we have to learn how to lay down our life for one another but one of the things that we do when our church brothers and sisters is bleeding, hallelujah, and we're bleeding and we're wounded, the first thing we do is begin to expose one another. Uh, we begin to talk about each other. We don't know how to cover each other. We don't know how to, uh, to cover one another up. We don't cover one another wounds. We don't try to bind up the brokenhearted. We don't try to heal those who have been broken. We don't try to do those things. But the first thing that we do, we do the, the thing, we, we, we criticize each other or Oh, well, this one, one wasn't saved. Oh, this one uh, did not. Well, this one said this. This one did that. And, and there is a strong spirit of offense in the church. A strong spirit of offense. And that is one of Satan's greatest ammunition. Because he understands that if he uses the uh, uh, the, the uh, weapon of, of offense, that we will begin to fight against one another. And a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. If we fight and devour one another, how can we build the kingdom of God? Then this is the thing that we need to focus on. Are we really building the kingdom of God or are we just wasting time? Because I tell you the truth, if you don't have love, you are wasting your time. If you say you're going to church and you have unforgiveness in your heart, you got bitterness, you are hypocritical, you are a Pharisee, you don't love one another, you are wasting your time. We have to learn how to love one another. Well, what is the biblical proof of that? We know 1 John 13 talks about. Uh, I don't care how good you prophesy. You can prophesy all you want. You can cast out devils all you want. You can do the work of an apostle all you want. You can prophesy accurately. Uh, you can uh, preach to people evangelistically. Uh, you can uh, be a, a pastor and have a big congregation. God is not fascinated with those things. That don't tickle God's fancy. God is not fascinated with the things that you can do. He's not fascinated with the abilities. Uh, what he wants to know is that do you have a heart of compassion? Do you have a heart of love? This message that we preach is about love. Amen. And so if you find yourself in a place or hearing a doctrine that the core a message of that doctrine is not about love and we are devouring one another, run for your dear life. Run for your life. That is not the church that God called. I pray that you all are hearing this. And this goes from the pulpit to the pew. Nobody's exempt. I can say that as a leader and I can also say that as a servant. Because in fact, we're all servants in the first place. Okay? So I, I'm, I'm moving along. I'm moving along. I pray this is blessing you. Hallelujah. The church is a hospital. It's a hospital. Right? 
it's it's very specialized in helping people committed to caring for the people we're committed to maintain care amen and so if you are not a, a leader or people that don't know what it means to love or you do not care then shut down the hospital if you go to a hospital and the hospital is not helping the people shut down the hospital if you have a church that's not helping the people shut it down wrap it up close the doors because you're not helping the people that's right run for your life this is what it's about Everyone should freely come. The Bible says it like this. I know this is fundamental teaching, but apparently we can't get it right yet. And the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It is not God's will that any should perish. But who are we to, to chase people out of the church? If God says he doesn't want his people to perish, then why are we causing people to perish? This that's a, that's something very serious. That's something. <laughs> that's a good one, now, y'all. We get out. You, we, we, I'm sure by now we all seen the movie Get Out. Get out. Run for your life. Because before you know it, you're gonna be, you're gonna start losing some things. Before you know it, uh, uh, they, they they they're trying to take from you rather than help you. Okay. Uh, so get out uh, if you have to. Okay. The Church of God is a place of restoration. So as I said to you before, this message is not a message of hatred. This is a message of love, of restoration. Uh, and, and no, this message is not about sending out subliminals. This is not sending out subliminals. Everyone that knows me knows me well. I am very vocal. I am very verbal. I'm very communicable. And I do it in the spirit of love and diplomacy. But I'm also very unapologetic in my approach. Uh, this message is not... Sub, uh, subliminal I, I'm, a, I'm a straight shooter when it comes to the things of God if there's something that needs to be said oh yes I will say it uh, but this is not a subliminal that's one thing I would say this message is a message of love to help the people to be restored to be restored and as I said we cannot keep uh, sweeping this thing underneath the rug this is not something that we should be sweeping underneath the rug Right, we gotta be all on the same page to accomplish one goal. All on the same page to accomplish one goal. So the church, church hurt is a result of negligence. It's a, it's a result of negligence. It's a result of mismanagement. Uh, it's a, it's a result of control, where people are being controlled and people are being misused. Uh, 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 church hurt often comes from a uh, 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 self. Uh, where you find people are, are are prideful and they're making people instead of uh, making uh, treating people as God's servants, we're taking them as slaves. We're treating God's people as slaves and not as servants, right? Uh, and so, and, and we're not seeing the love, okay? Uh, and so, one of the things I want to say to you is that we we can't keep bleeding on each other, because truthfully, from the pulpit to the pew, a lot of people are bleeding. There's a lot of people are bleeding, and we can't keep afford to keep bleeding on each other. Uh, this is a time we have to uh, uh, bind up our wounds and begin to to move on and begin to do what Christ has called us to do. Okay, so watch this, watch this, and so we we see that uh, um, that if we keep bleeding on one another, we can't help each other, right? So because of church hurt. Church hurt is often uh, resulted in what we call spiritual abuse. Spiritual abuse, right? And the reason why I'm bringing this, this topic because a lot of people had requested for me to bring this topic. And I'm, I'm bringing it tonight uh, not to, um, to um, enable your hurt. This message is not to enable your hurt or to pacify it. Or to make you feel like, uh, oh yeah, well that's why I don't go. This is not what that's for. This message is because it was requested. I, I was led to speak on it, and also uh, to to also to build you back up, right? So you can be restored, and we can restore relationships again, right? And so, spiritual abuse is often a result of why people feel church hurt. That's right. Press towards the mark. That's right. So spiritual abuse oftentimes is not in.
intentional. And sometimes it is intentional. Uh, sometimes people are not aware that they're inflicting harm on you. Uh, and there are some times that people know that they're inflicting harm on you. Uh, some people have become so zealous of maintaining the fundamentals of the faith that they become too controlling. So there are some times, there are some leaders that are, are become overly zealous. That they, <laughs> well, we got to preach the truth, right? Uh, there are some people that become so overzealous to the point where they don't know that they're controlling God's people, but they do. Right, and there are some people that are intentionally narcissists. They are intentionally making God's people into slaves and servants. Right, uh, sometimes uh, their injurious actions uh, uh, never really occur to them that they are potentially inflicting harm to you. And on the contrary, there are some that are blatant. That's right, the problem is sin. That's right, woman of God. And there are some people that are blatant in their approach. It, it also causes folk to stop trusting and give up on church altogether. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, uh, so uh, there are some people that are just blatant. They're blatantly controlling people. They're blatantly hurting people. And so the refusal to become empathetic towards people will cause uh, us to lose sensitivity. To lose sensitivity of how to deal with God's people. Right? So pastors also, I'm going to speak, I, I speak very balanced message. The people are hurting, but also pastors are hurting, okay? Uh, be, um, pastors are hurting, however, from, from church hurt as well, right? They're hurting from church hurt as well uh, uh, because I want you to know this too, that sheep do bite. Sheep do bite, okay? And so some pastors have been really hurt by even their members, by their leadership, and, and, and there are some of them that are leading and bleeding, Okay, and you'll be surprised. A lot of leaders are walking around and masquerading and concealing the hurt, right? They're concealing the hurt, but still they have to preach to those who are unappreciative. Okay, I'm preaching very balanced tonight. I'm preaching for the people that are in the pews as well as for leadership. And so they're, sometimes they too have to preach to people that are unappreciative. Uh, 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 pastors do deal with that. They deal with hurt uh, also. Uh, we, 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 we put them on this pedestal and we have this superficial uh, mentality that pastors don't go through this. They are leading and bleeding themselves, right? And so they put on this masquerading party and um, a, a mask uh, and yet they are hurting in themselves. Uh, they also are hurting because they watch people who they nurtured turn around and abandon them, turn around and gossip about them, turn around and hurt them and walk away. And so pastors also deal with abuse. Also deal with abuse. Okay, some pastors today were abused by their leadership and they were also in a controlling regime. And so that's all they know. They only know to lead by aggression. They only know to lead by control. Maybe they came from under a leadership, uh, uh, an apostolic leadership perhaps, that was uh, uh, controlling them. And that's their style and method that they learned. And they took down on that. And that's a learned behavior. So sometimes in order for us to come back into reconciliation, where relationships that was once breached to come back together, is that we need to have a mutual understanding. We need to talk about these things. We need to love one another. We need to learn how to get rid of the offense and, and totally learn how to talk to each other. We need to learn how to respect one another. Right, uh, 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 learning how to respect one another, respect the grace that's on each other's life. Hi, God bless you, woman of God. God bless you, uh, Chrissy Bonner. God bless you. I see you all. Thank you. Uh, so, and also, as I said, pastors deal with rejection too. They have to deal with the daily stress of life. Uh, and there are many pastors that are also giving up. There, are, some of them are falling into temptation. Some of them fall into adultery. They fall into sin. Uh, they're giving up. Some of them are committing suicide. Some of them are thrown in the towels uh, because they're dealing with these internal battles that nobody knows of. Right? And so there are a lot of pastors that are, are, that are publicly winning and privately losing. They're publicly winning and privately losing. And so they walk around with a sense of cosmetic uh, uh, happiness and a cosmetic joy, but deep inside there's no joy, there's no peace, right? 
and and there's nobody to turn to where people are where no one's there to pray for them so i'm trying to preach a very balanced message tonight because there are a lot of people that are hurting and so because oftentimes these leaders are hurting they wind up inflicting harm on the people then the people are hurting and then as i said to you in retrospect it's like a cancer that 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 needs to be healed unless it's it's addressed and unless we apply the bomb we cannot get healed so i pray this is blessing you tonight so let me show you some signs of and i'm gonna try to be as quick i'm gonna be on here for a few more minutes let me show you some signs of why people are hurt people are hurt because they go through um what we call spiritual abuse what we call spiritual abuse and spiritual abuse is similar to other types of abuse uh but it's 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 it's, it's subliminal as i said to you before and it's painfully loud it can range from uh people um past uh, pastoral authority that's abused uh it can also be boiled down to bad mouthing the members where people are throwing their mouth and bad mouthing the members from the pulpit amen uh where they're speaking against the people from the pulpit which shouldn't be so like throwing stones right uh it can go from a weakening and undermining the anointing on your life uh or the person the the their their spiritual empowerment or their volume now i'm gonna stay right there for a minute i want to stay right there for a minute because this is why a lot of people again as i said to you before are are leaving the churches is because of undermining now i'm not saying this is every church i'm going to say that again this is not every church. There are many great churches out there. There are great apostolic fathers. There are wonderful, accurate prophets that still love the Lord. That's not abusing God's people. There are pastors that are out there that truly do care about the people that they undergird. There are evangelists that still have a passion for souls again. There are teachers that still are preaching good doctrine and that's not preaching false doctrine. There is a remnant that's out there that still uh, serve God in spirit and in truth. There are true worshipers that are out there. They're, they're still out there. They, God has a people that's reserved to himself. But I'm talking about those who are in need. That are in need of adjusting. Uh, are in need of proper alignment. That are in need of direction and counsel. And again, we know that Jesus himself even did this. He demonstrated this. When he addressed the seven books, uh, excuse me, the seven churches uh, in the book of Revelation, he addressed each and every one of them according to their deeds, according to the conditions that was taking place in, taking place in that region and in that church. And that's what I'm doing tonight. I am addressing each individual churches that may be experiencing uh, this ailment of, of, of abuse, this this deficiency that's experiencing all kinds of things that needs to be uh, rectified. And so uh, a spiritual abuse often happens and church hurt often happens because uh, people are are being controlled right uh there are people that are experiencing controlling churches and authoritative leadership right and uh, when they experience authoritative leadership uh they they abuse people and telling them what they can and cannot do uh they're taking god's people and making them into slaves okay god took his people out of slavery Number one, he took his people out of slavery. Uh, 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 when we see that in the Old Testament, uh, it was never God's intention for his people to be in slavery. That's why he raised up a leader and he called his name Moses. He raised up Moses to take his people and redeem his people out of slavery. And amen, when he redeemed them out of slavery, that book was called Exodus. That, oh uh, God, I'm going somewhere tonight. That book was called Exodus because anytime you find yourself in a place of slavery, God is going to prepare a place that's called Exodus. He's going to cause you to leave those places that's inflicting harm. You see, uh, any place where you find that has a controlling and authoritative leadership and where it's not a place, a 
of restoration, but rather it's a regime to control the people. God is going to give you an exodus. I do not encourage people to stay in a place where you are spiritually dying, especially in a place where you are not allowed, amen, to develop. We're a place where you are not allowed to grow. Amen. Maybe you have been in that ministry for about 10 years and nobody has acknowledged you. And maybe you have giftings and you have a call on your life. Maybe you're called to ministry. Maybe there's an anointing on your life that you carry. But yet, because you carry such an anointing on your life, uh, the controlling leadership will not acknowledge you. And so people are leaving for that reason. But as again, as I said, uh, God never called you and anointed you just to sit there in the pew and just become somebody's audience. I'm going to say that again for somebody who done missed it. God never called for his people to be an audience, right? He never called you and anointed you for you to just sit there under a ministry that's controlled you and never allow you to be anointed but they want you to be an audience uh, he's never called God did not call an audience he called anointed vessel so if a ministry is causing you to be their audience where you stand there and you applauding them every Sunday yes preach pastor go ahead preach the word pastor but yet never acknowledging the gift of God that's on your life they would rather you sit there and perish that is not a place where you belong. God is calling an exodus. Now, I'm not saying that you should not wait your turn. I'm not talking about those individuals that like to go out before their time. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about those individuals that are prideful and feel like they're ready and they can beat their chest and they're a one-man army. I'm not talking about those individuals because pastors have to be mindful of individuals like that. There are some people that honestly need to be sat down because they are, are ahead of themselves. Maybe they're too prideful. Maybe they're arrogant and they they need training and they need equipping before they go out. And I endorse pastors that know how to train and sit people down and make sure that they are developed properly before they go out and create more damage. Because there are some people that go out, they say, oh yeah, I'm anointed. So they go out, but they're not trained. You're untrained. You are untrained soldier. An untrained soldier is a dangerous man. I'm going to say that again. An untrained soldier is a dangerous man. So there are some pastors that know what they're doing. In order for them to launch you out, in order for them to, to birth you out in the spirit, some of them have to make sure that you are ready. They have to make sure that you have a, a, a character. They have to make sure you have integrity. They have to make sure that you're upright. They have to make sure you're walking in holiness and right that you're walking in circumspect. They have to make sure that you are, are gifted, that you're not going to abuse your gift. They have to make sure that you're walking in the spirit of humility. You are walking in integrity. They want to make sure that you have the right motive. So some pastors, I don't blame you. If some people are not ready, sit them down until they are ready. But if they are ready and they are anointed and you're still sitting them down because you are intimidated by the gift, because you are intimidated by the anointing, then you are a controlling uh, uh, authoritative leadership and God does not take pleasure in that. Amen. And so if you find yourself in a place that that's abusing your gifting, they are abusing you and, and they know that you're anointed, but yet they don't acknowledge you for who you are. That is not a place where you're going to be. You should be because I see so many people because of their loyalty, they stay in a place that's killing them. I'm going to clap to that one. Some people are staying in a place that's killing them. And they know it's killing them. But because of their loyalty, they don't want to leave. Because it was your grandmammy and your grandpappy church, I don't want to leave. I'm going to stay here and die. I'm gonna. It was my grandpappy, so I had to honor their request. Uh, or I've been in this church for years. The devil is a liar. You better get up and make that exodus because God, hallelujah, did not anoint you for you to just sit there and die. God didn't call nobody spiritually to be spiritually dead. God did not call you to sit in the pew and look at the back of somebody's neck back and then to hear, to hear them preach all the time. Listen, this is the time where leaders have to train up leaders. Every true leader will begin to to undergird another leader, upcoming leader. They want to make sure that they have successors. And to every predecessor, there should be a successor. If you find a leadership that's not 
praising our leaders and sanctioning them and ordaining them and appointing them and anointing them uh, and they're uh, 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 dispersing them out. That is not a ministry you want to be a part of. Oftentimes, places like that is not a church. It's a cult. I know I'm going to get in trouble for that one right there, but that's all right. That's all right. Uh, and you don't want to be in a place like that. God did not anoint you for you to sit down. He did not anoint you uh, for you to get comfortable, for you to get stagnant. That's not why he has anointed you. You have been anointed to empower. You have been anointed, amen, to impact. Uh, you have been an anointed for this thing. Uh, there is a glory that's on uh, some of your lives. There's a glory that you're carrying. There's something on the inside of some of you. But because you have this loyalty to people that are not even loyal to you, uh, you will stand there and spiritually die. Listen, you don't want to spiritually die. This is why a lot of people are experiencing the backlash and the trauma. Uh, but they're going through trauma because uh, you find that uh, 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 they're in these places that's not undergirding them or developing them. So that's why you're hurt. I hear some people complaining 24 7 well my pastor don't like me my pastor's not using me uh my pastor did this today and if you are upset with your pastor then just then maybe that's not the place for you maybe you need to find a place where you can go where you're going to be comfortable but one thing you cannot do is go to somebody's place and tell them how to operate it you leave that to god Leave that to God. Go where you are going to be undergirded. This is why I'm going to say this. Apostolic fathers and leadership is very important. I'm talking about true, authentic, original, no carbon copies, no wannabe apostles. I just got my uh, apostleship from the internet type of apostles. I'm not talking about those people. I'm not talking about those people who endorse themselves. I'm talking about those true, authentic apostleship fathers in the ministry that will oversee ministries and churches where they will give accountability where there is a sense of accountability where there is good structure where there is good order where the foundation is laid where they understand that it is imperative to raise up leaders and impart their spirit in the upcoming leadership spirit that is important that is important because as the bible says that we have a lot of, 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 of instructors, but there's not many fathers. There are not many fathers. There are not many uh, prophets that are in the church that are, that, that are telling people, uh, to giving them a sense of direction. So now people are anointed, but they don't got no direction. They don't know what to do. But if you are in a leadership now where you're in, a, a, you're being controlled, and now you're in a, a regime where there's they're having rulership over the weak, and the controlling leadership is abusing the people, right? And they don't want you to get to a place of maturation, uh, or you for, to fulfill your kingdom assignment, as my friend would say, get out. Like that movie, get out, get out. There is an exodus for you, and I'm not telling you just. Of the church. That's not what I'm saying either because the enemy has a way of misconstruing what people are saying. I I'm not telling you to just get up and leave your church. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that if you find yourself in a place like this, then you need to do some evaluating. You need to pray. Let me say this. Pray and ask the Holy Spirit, what should I do concerning the place where I am in my life, concerning the place where I have been positioned Ask the Holy Spirit, what should I do? And God will direct, right? Uh, I'm moving along here. I'm moving along. And I'm going to make this a, maybe a two-part series because I, uh, I know this is going to be quite some time. So there are some people that always want you to stay as their audience and their student. They don't want you to be anointed. They want you to be their audience. They want you to be their student. So that way, they are the super superstars and you are the fans. That's what it is. They want you to be the fan and not the superstar. They want to be the superstar. They want to be the ones that have the platform and the spotlights are on them, lights, camera, action, 
and they get to get the mic, but your voice is never heard. And in spite of you being anointed, you're going to be my fan and I'm the superstar. Be careful of that superstar mentality because I'm telling you the truth. That is also in the church. We have that superstar mentality. Instead of us being humble and, and submitting uh, to the authority of Jesus Christ, we want to be superstars. God never called no superstars in his ministry. Uh, uh, we want to be superstars. We want to preach here, there, and everywhere. Uh, we want to walk with the big, the big names. We want to walk with the big names. We want the big titles. We want the accolades. Listen, if that is your focus, you have the wrong motive. You have the wrong intentions. And God can bless people with the wrong intentions. God does not bless evil intentions. He sees and knows our hearts. Right? God knows that. So as I'm saying to you is that we have to be mindful that we're not uh, in places that is uh, restricting your destiny. Be careful that you're not submitting to leadership that's restricting and binding your destiny. Oh God, because truthfully you have some soul binders. You have some destiny stoppers. You have destiny blockers. Let me tell you something. There are some people that will block your destiny. And this also is uh, uh, individuals in leadership. There are uh, uh, destiny blocking spirits. And so there are some people that should have been apostles already. You should have been prophets already. You should have had your own church already. You should have been preaching already. But yet you find yourself, you're still in the same place you were five years ago. If you are in a church and if five years have gone by and you have not seen growth, something is wrong. Something is seriously wrong if you find yourself five and ten years from now in the same place plays that's right the title none of that stuff can get you into heaven none of that stuff can save you okay uh, so i want to say that uh, i'm gonna make this a two-part series and i'm gonna wrap it up and i'm gonna also uh um ask if if anyone has any questions i do want to answer questions because i wanted this to be a uh, very interactive tonight uh where i can be a blessing to you and ask, answer your questions, right? So now, uh, 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 another reason why people are dealing with church hurt is because when a pastor tell his congregation not to talk to people who left their church, uh, people get discouraged by that. People get discouraged by that. So people go through church hurt because now they are an outcast. They are an outcast. Nobody talks to them. So they start with this manipulation strategy and tactic, right? Uh, as far as controlling the minds of people. So it's motivation through manipulation to control, right? God never allows us to, man to manipulate or control anyone. This is why people are leaving. Manipulation, the little games that we play. The God's house is not a house of games. God is a God is a God of love, yes, but God is a God that still have standards. I'm going to say that again. God is a God that has standards. I don't understand why do we allow anything to happen in the house of God? Why are we behaving the way we behave? Why do we allow anything to happen? But we don't allow this stuff in our own houses. We don't allow it in when we go to a secular arena or in the marketplace. These little things don't happen because they understand they understand certain behavior, there's certain codes of conduct. That if you are in a business, there's a certain code of conduct and disposition that you're supposed to have. And if you don't have that, you're not good for business. You will either get fired. Right? Uh, and they don't tolerate certain things because there's a code of conduct. There's a standard. But why is it that when we come into the house of God, we don't have standards? God is a God of standards. Uh, 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 why is it that we don't even have conviction for the things that we do? I see all kinds of things going on in the body of Christ and that's why people are leaving. People are becoming apostates. People are backsliding. People are giving up on their hope and on their faith simply because of what happens in the church. We're hearing uh, uh, about uh, 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 so many different things and, 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 and that's right. That's right. God is still a consuming fire. Uh, no, I'm not preaching judgment. 
No, and I said, I'm going to say it again because you got some religious folks that will say that we're preaching a message of hate. No, this is not a message of judgment. But your own sin will find you out. And your own sin will cause judgment. Okay? But if you give that to God, then God can fix it. See, now, uh, one of the things that we, we tend to do, one of the things that why the church don't have standards is because we become so apologetic. We're trying to be so politically correct. And in order for you to please God, you can't be politically correct. Politics and God's presence don't work together. It's either one or the other. Choose ye this day who you're going to serve. You can't be politically correct and you can't have power at the same time. It's one or the other. And so when I speak this message, I am not trying to be politically correct. I am telling you like it is. This is what God requires. He's a God of standard. I'm not saying that we don't have shortcomings. But he's still a God of standard. There's a place of repentance and restoration for that, yes. But I want to get off topic. I just wanted to say that. Now, here's another reason why people experience church hurt. They experience church hurt uh, because... They find themselves in a uh, ministry or places that have uh, rigid rules and they have uh, the sense of legalism. There's a sense of legalism, right? So there are leaders that, that rules are accommodating to them and not so much uh, with the people, right? And so they coerce the people into submission. Now, they will tell you to do some things Oftentimes, I'll submit to leadership. I tell people, and I'm going to be very uh, mindful how I say this. I tell people, yes, it is important to submit to leadership. Submission is good. There is a however. If you hear an overemphasis on submission all the time, be careful, because chances are that leadership is controlling. If you hear leadership, oh, submit to me. You got issues with, uh, with uh, uh, submission. Oh, submit to me. Uh, um, I don't want you to say anything. Submit. Uh, I don't want you to do this. Learn to submit. And all the, and if they're constantly saying, oh, you're not ready yet. Submit. Or they're constantly saying that, listen to me. Submit and submit. And, and if submission is all you hear then chances are that leadership is an autocratic controlling leadership. And that's why oftentimes people leave churches because of the control. Because of the control. Because of this dominant Jezebelic attitude and approach and spirit that we have. Instead of us being one to restore the people to love and to hear people and to hear their heart and what do they have to say. We don't take time to talk to people. And, and I say it in this tone. Why am I saying it in this tone? Because I'm passionate about this. I'm passionate. This tone that I'm using is not a tone of, 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 of anger. This is a tone of passion, of, of conviction, of, of, of wanting for us to get this thing right. God wants his people to get this thing right, saints of God. So, beloved, when you find that uh, uh, that happened frequently, then you want to probably assess certain things. Uh, and so people are leaving for that reason. People are dealing with church hurt because of the rigid rules. The rigid rules that people are, are you can't question their leadership. Or people are being manipulative, manipulated and programmed to doing things that's appeasing to people. That's right. This is also a form of witchcraft. This is a form of witchcraft. And so people are leaving because they see control. They see witchcraft. They don't see love. They don't see peace. They don't see unity. They don't see compassion. They're not seeing this. So that's why people are leaving. Now, our people are not necessarily church hoppers. Uh, people don't necessarily want to church hop. The, people are moving from place one place to the other. Uh, I mean, you do have church hoppers, but people are moving from one place to the other uh, simply because they're not seeing that example. So uh, when we had this thing saying, oh, uh, uh, there are some people that are church hoppers. Everybody don't want to be 
the church hopper. Maybe because they came to your church and it, 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 they didn't see the spirit of God there. So they left from one place to the next. And when they went to the next place, there was no peace for them. And they went from one place to the next and there was no peace for them because they're not seeing any godly examples. And so because they're not seeing godly examples, they're leaving the church altogether. But I want to encourage you and implore you, please do not give up on God. Now, you want to find a, a good church to go to, but don't give up fellowshipping with one another. Don't give that up. Don't give it up. And as I said, when you go, when you go and, and you go to serve God, stay focused. Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. Um, I'm actually losing my voice, but I'm, I'm going to wrap this up in a few minutes. Uh, so I'm going to finish up with this point. I'm going to make this a two-part series because I believe this is going to bless somebody. I'm going to talk about how to overcome church hurt. What do I do to get over it, right? Because I don't believe in um, giving you, showing you the problem, but not offering solutions. See, as I said, every great surgeon, every true leader will show you what the problem is. They will address the problem, but they will always give you solutions. If, if every time there was a rebuke, there was always restoration. Okay? That's what it should be like. If you're going to cut, then restore. This is a message of love and restoration. Okay? I'm going to talk about how to restore, how to come back into reconciliation, how to love one another, how to forgive each other. Right? Uh, uh, what can we do to, to come to common ground, uh, to make sure that we're doing the right thing, that we're not walking around with offense so that we can finally move on to the bigger things. Because we're, we're, we're so stuck on church hurt. We got to get past this. We have to listen. I, I want to say this, and I'm going to say this in closing also. You are too anointed, and God has called you to do so many great exploits to be stuck on being hurt, to be stuck on just uh, 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 on the offense. God don't want you stuck on the offense. He don't want you because all this stuff literally constricts and binds up your ministry. It will stagnate your ministry. Okay, stuff like this stagnates your ministry when we're walking around with unforgiveness and we have offense and we're still dealing with church hurt. This literally restricts your ministry. So even though, even though you are not in fault, even though you are not in the wrong, the fact that we're still harboring resentment, this stuff blots our blessing. It blocks the anointing on your life. Resentment, church hurt, uh, 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 offense. This stuff blocks the anointing. It blocks us from advancing the kingdom. It blocks reformation. It blocks restoration. It blocks uh, 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 us moving from glory to glory, from us seeing the ministry taken from one dimension to the next. We cannot see people being equipped and edified and coming into the unity of faith if we're still stuck on who hurt me or who offended me or who didn't like me. This is not the time to be worrying about your haters. This is not the time to necessarily about who hurt you, who offended you, who don't like you. This is the time to prepare. And this is something that we're not hearing. Now, everyone, uh, I, I say this with all humility. I have a prophetic call in my life, and, and I flow in that, in, in that office, but uh, I also stick to an evangelistic message as well because we're not preparing the people for Christ's return. We're, not, we're focusing on the non-essentials. Who hurt me? Who stepped on my toes? Why I'm not going to the church anymore? Uh, why I don't like this pastor? Who's doing what? Oh, and, and who, who's sleeping with who? This is not the time to be doing that. Christ is going to return again. Is the church prepared? Uh, my message is to prepare you. To restore you. To prophetically direct you. In the, dim in the dim dimension that you're supposed to be operating in. To set structure back into your life again. To bring your life in back to proper alignment. That's what this message is about. This message should be about uh, 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 that we are in the times.
and this is the signs of the times, right? We're coming into a time where, where people are dying and they're dying without Christ. There are churches that are that and people that need to be delivered and need to be set free. But yet we're thinking about who don't like me, who my haters are, who just listen, that's all the tactic of the enemy to distract you. Uh, we're, we're distracted by who the good church. We're distracted by uh, who's the best preacher or who can preach the loudest or who tore up the house. Who pastor so and so tore up the house? Or I like this pastor better than this pastor because this pastor preached more loudly than that pastor or that pastor do this. But that's the wrong motive. That's something that we should not be focused on. In fact, nobody preached better than nobody. Everybody has called to, to do what God has called them to do. And, and we get distracted by that. We get distracted by who, who we think preached better than the other person. Nobody preached better than anybody. God has anointed you to be authentically you and nobody else. You're not to be a carbon copy of anybody else. Okay? Uh, he didn't call T.D. Jakes is T.D. Jakes. Preflo is Preflo. Joe Osteen is Joe Osteen. Juanita Bynum is Juanita Bynum. Dehema is Dehema. Uh, Millie, you are who God says you are. Don't focus on these little non-essentials. That's why people are leaving the church. People are hurting because they feel like they have no sense of belonging. Because we're, we give a sense of entitlement to other people who they think is anointed. And people feel like they have no place in the church because uh, I need to be... I need to be this person to be accepted. And I tell people oftentimes, uh, uh, people are dealing with church hurt because you so badly want to be accepted. The only person you should be to be craving to be accepted by is God. The only thing that I'm craving to hear is well done, thou good and faithful servant. I'm not craving to be accepted by men. I'm not craving uh, to be uh, to have friendship with the world or to be accepted by big preachers or for somebody to accept me into their little circle. I don't want to. In fact, I tell people all the time. I don't. I don't desire to be in nobody's circle. God didn't call me to be in circles. He called me to soar. Uh, so why would I want to put myself in a circle? Uh, he didn't call you uh, to want to run with the big crowds. So that's not why. God God called you. He called you to prepare ye the way of the Lord. He called you to make his path straight. He called you to bring conviction. He called you to save souls. He called you amen, to preach the kingdom. But we're, we're not doing that. Distractions. Sidetrack. And so people, now, now when people are, are, want to come into the unity of faith, people really want to seek the face of God. They're not seeing this. So people are leaving the church because they're not getting what's substantial. They're not getting substance. All they're going, when they go, they see all kinds of, of, of different things that have infiltrated the church. Different spirits and different attitudes and dispositions. And what have we become? What have we become? This is the time when we need to evaluate our lives and say, God, and, 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 and I'm not trying to Pump you up and preach you like how all these other Facebook live, they, they try to preach you to make you feel good. I'm not doing that. I come to speak to your spirit. I, I, I come to let you, to talk to you, to teach and speak to your spirit and say, evaluate your life. That if Christ were to take us today, would we be ready? Would the church be ready? Would I be ready? Am I ready? If God comes and takes me today, am I ready? Is the church preaching the right gospel? Are we ready? Are we prepared? Are we prepared? Are we prepared? Now, I'm going I'm to say this and I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. And I want to uh, for those of you who have questions. Are we ready? Are we prepared? And I, and I prophetically speak tonight. I prophetically declare tonight that this message is to bring you into alignment. It's to bring you in alignment. See, you, you, you're not, this is not a popular message. You're going to have some folk that will criticize you. Listen, I am used to the Siskel and Eberts. You know, the critics of your life, the people who like to criticize your message and, and criticize your gospel. It's okay. You can criticize, but I know as for me, 
I'm going to preach the gospel of this kingdom. To say this message is a message of love. We need to return to love. Return to conviction. Return to the fear of the Lord. Have reverence for the things of God. Return to our godly standards. We we, be so busy trying to be superstars. But that's why folks are leaving the church. Are they truly being healed? Are they healed? Or when people come to the church, are they being healed? Are they being restored? Are they being delivered of the things that have them bound? Are they being set free? That when they come to your church, are they are you are they constantly giving out but they're not getting? Where's the impartation? Where's the impartation and the building up they're supposed to get? Where is it? There's an accountability from pulpit to the pew. There's an accountability. I'm speaking from leadership down. Leadership down. I'm talking to everyone. Hallelujah. Okay, so I, 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 I'm gonna um, open up for any questions. I'm gonna take a, this time to uh, to see if and anyone has any questions for me concerning this, and then I'm gonna conclude for tonight, and I'll I'll make this a part two, and then I'll make this a part two, and then I'm gonna uh, also be praying. For some people that want, um, that want prayer, that want prayer on this night. And as I said to you before, uh, this message is for those who truly want to hear what God is saying, what God is saying, because everybody's going around talking about, talking about, uh, um, oh, God said prosperity. God said he's going to bless you. God said he's going to give you a cattle on a thousand hills. God's going to give you 10 horses, uh, three Cadillacs. Uh, uh, on 10 husbands and 10 wives. Look, look, that's not the message. You done missed it. That's not the message. That's not the message. Uh, the last time I checked the Bible, that wasn't the message. That's not the message. <laughs> the message is Christ. Bottom line. Bottom line. This is the truth. And nothing but the truth, so help me God. And the Holy Spirit builds witness with me. So I, I do want to pray for some of you tonight. I'll continue. Uh, but if you have any questions, and then I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and pray for some of you uh, who have been feeling discouraged. Uh, and also for pastors too. This is not just for, uh, for the people. This is for pastors that also feel discouraged. Because pastors get discouraged too. So this is not an indictment on any church or anyone. Pastors get We all need it. Okay? We all need deliverance. We all need help. We all need restoration. We all need to be redeemed. God reveals to redeem. As I said, this message is not to expose, but to extract the cancer that's in the body of Christ so that we can be healed. That we don't have to uh, live the way that we're living. That we don't have to focus on the church hurt. That we can get past our little petty grievances and focus on the things of God. Amen. Amen. So if there's any questions, glory to God. I'm going to take the questions. If there aren't uh, any questions, I'm just going to go ahead and pray for some of you tonight. And then I'm going to conclude. But I, I pray that this was a blessing. Uh, guys, please, I implore you to share the video. We got disconnected at first. But I want you to also share the videos. Share the videos. Because it's going to bless somebody. And people need to hear the truth. Okay? So I pray that this message was a blessing. As I said, let's put aside our pretty grievances. And focus on the cross. Focus on Christ again. He's calling the church into divine alignment. He's calling for us to be redeemed, restored, reconciled unto Him. Prepared for him again. He's calling his, his people to be recharged. He's calling for his people to, to anoint them. To do the will of God. To carry out his divine plan. He's calling for you. To do what he has commissioned you to do. To take on that mantle. And walk in your divine assignment. 
this is the hour and this is the time as I said that we're in that God wants to restore the church restore the altar of God again in our lives restore us back into love God is doing a do over he wants to restore you retard you revitalize you he wants to empower you he wants to equip you he wants to impart himself in you God wants to infuse his Holy Ghost inside of you tonight he wants to do a new thing in you God doesn't want you and then to be in that condition where you're in but everywhere in the Bible I search God came to heal and to save that which was lost and I say to you tonight that you don't have to be where you are you don't gotta be where you are God hallelujah is calling you out of that dry places. God is calling you from out of that despondency. He's calling you out of that despair. He's calling you out of that dry place. He's calling you, hallelujah, to a higher place of worship. He's calling you higher saints of God. Yes, to do His will, to do His mandate. Yes, God is calling you and He's repositioning His church. Hallelujah. He's repositioning us again. Glory be to God. He's calling us back to, to reposition Positioning. Uh, some of you have gone away, Lord, uh, but he's rerouting you. Uh, yes, there is a divine rerouting. Uh, hallelujah. And he's saying, come back again. Uh, return to your first love. Uh, yes, I know you've been abused. Uh, yes, I understand that you've gone through some things. Uh, you've been discouraged. Uh, you may want to throw in the towels. Uh, hallelujah. You may have gone to places and there was no hope for you. Uh, but there's hope for you tonight. Uh, God wants to restore your life. Uh, he wants to bring you back. Saints of God, uh, yes, return to your first love. Uh, hallelujah, God wants to breathe life uh, back into you. Uh, I'm going to come to ask you a question. As God asked, hallelujah, prophet Ezekiel. And he said, son of man, can these dry bones live? Uh, and I say to you tonight, yes, those dry bones can live. Uh, their dry bones can live. Uh, maybe your bones, uh, hallelujah, your spiritual bones have dried up. Uh, yes, maybe it's dried up and, and it was scattered. Maybe parts of your life were scattered, but God is going to bring that back together again. Can these dry bones live? Yes, they can live. I prophetically declare tonight that your life shall experience what I call a divine recovery. You shall recover it all. Hallelujah. You shall be in pursuit of purpose, and you will not give up. You will not quit, and you will not give in. I'm going to pray tonight. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, oh God, that tonight, Father, that you will bring your people hallelujah back into divine alignment. God, I pray that there will be a divine recovery in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who felt that there was hope, there was no hope, God. You are the hope, hallelujah, that makes us not ashamed. And in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, oh God, that your people, hallelujah, will come to love you again. That we will come back into the unity of faith. That God, hallelujah, that Lord God, we will take on, hallelujah, the mission that you have commissioned us to do. May our focus be the commission that you have commissioned us to do. God, I pray, hallelujah, that Lord God, that we will experience a recovery in our life, that that which was lost and that which is devil trying to take from us, that God, we will be restored on tonight, God. Yes, God, hallelujah, we are in, in pursuit of purpose. And I pray, oh God, tonight, that purpose, hallelujah, that the people of God to experience purpose that they too shall see manifestation in their life. Hallelujah, that they will not have to deal with that hurt any longer. That God, that you will bind up their broken hearts. Hallelujah, that, that you will heal them. Hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus. And that God, as you will heal them, that you will empower them. That they will mount up their wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. That hallelujah, they shall walk and not faint. Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, oh God, that you will give them a high speed. That God they will run through truth. Hallelujah. 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 They will run through truth and leap over walls. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that tonight that you will make them, hallelujah, your weapons of war. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, raise up your people in this hour. Raise them up, hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah, to be strengthened in the most holy 
of faith. I speak strength to those who are weary. I speak strength to those who have been walking and they've been feeling weary. Hallelujah, be not weary. In well doing, but in due season, you shall reap if you faint night. You are in your due season. You are in the hour of your due season. Yes, this is due season. Due season where you shall see the hands of God. Hallelujah. Will repair your life. Yes, God will repair your life. That He will take the rubbles and He will store. Hallelujah. That He will give you a beautiful ashes. That hallelujah. That you don't have to be ruined any longer. I should bring you on this evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ma celebre kapala bakata la bekasa. Nimbri kasundiri oshkatai. I pray that tonight that God is going to do something for you. He's going to do something for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bless God for you. I bless God for all of you. I bless God for all of you. Don't let your fire go out. Don't let your fire go out. This song I pray prophetically. Don't let your fire go out. Because of what you experience. You are not your past. You are not what happened to you. You are not what happened to you in the past. For the Bible declares. That now. He shall do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? Shall you not know it? You are not that trauma. God, hallelujah, has the power to restore you. Your life can be restored. You can be restored to love. You don't gotta be splintered. You don't gotta be fragmented. You don't have to go through what you're going through now. Yes, God can restore you. He can take those little broken pieces that people have done to you. Hallelujah. And He can restore you back in love. He can bring that reconciliation back to your life. Hallelujah. Where your mind is renewed. Yes, He's bringing a renewal in your life. Yes, I speak a divine renewal. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Don't let your fire go out because of something that happened to you. Don't let your zeal go out. Don't let your fire go out. Let the fire that's on the altar keep burning. Don't let that fire go out. Hallelujah. You're not what you happened to you. You are not the past. Don't get distracted by that. Hallelujah. God is calling you to a higher place. He's calling you to a higher dimension. Yes, God wants to shift you into another dimension. In your life, hallelujah. He wants to destroy and to shift you into another dimension of your life. But he said to come a little higher. He wants you to come a little higher. Don't let those little small petty things hold you bound and hold you back. Yes, hallelujah. This is the time of the hour when we have to begin to soar and begin to surge and burn for God and let our passion burn for God. Yes, hold up because shut. Hallelujah. He wants to endure you with power. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. He wants to endure you with power. He wants to endure you with power. He wants to fill you up. He can do it again. He can do it again. God can.